Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for coming out. Um, I'm very excited to uh, learn that I have secured uh, my first re-election. I spoke to Mr. Sullivan this morning, and he congratulated me. Um, this has been just an incredibly, just a crazy first term in Congress. This, uh, even campaigning in the middle of a pandemic, I could have never imagined it. But people really stood up and they, sh they voted, they participated, and I just am so incredibly thankful for that. I'm so grateful for my staff, for all of my volunteers, for all of my supporters who got involved. Um, I am personally, personally so grateful to the voters for the city of Waterbury, where people just turned up and voted. Uh, were enthusiastic about voting. I saw people across the district just really taking, you know, our democracy seriously and engaging and participating. Last night we were getting the numbers and I felt comfortable that we were in a good place, but my campaign spent a lot of time over the last two months encouraging people to vote early, to mail in their absentee ballots, and all of those votes are important and I want to wait, I wanted to wait for all of those votes to be counted. My son actually mailed in his ballot. I want his ballot to be counted. So I was being patient and, and just waiting. At, and I know that's hard for a lot of people to do, but um, I would not have even come out now, but for the fact that Mr. Sullivan called and conceded. So I just thank everybody. We have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of, to put our community back together. We have a lot to, um, just repair the damage that's been caused by COVID. And I really want to continue to be a strong representative for this district. I spent a lot of time listening to people, learning about this district, and I know that my second term will be even stronger than the first one um, because I'm committed to being everybody's congressperson, to bringing all voices into the conversation. I did tell Mr. Sullivan, I know that law and order was uh, something that was central to his campaign and seemed to be a community that he was speaking to. I have always been committed to supporting our law enforcement. I remain committed. I would hope that we extend that same level of commitment and support to the spouses and families of law enforcement officers. Um, and he agreed with me. Um, but again, so many, the Waterbury Fire Department, actually the fire, fire departments, first responders all over, this, all over my district, teachers, you know, local unions, uh, local activists, so many people from so many different backgrounds, experiences, walks of life, neighborhoods, came up and supported me. You know, we're aligned in so many ways and I'm going to work really hard to expand that number and bring more people in. And, you know, I, I, I just hope that other people will do the same. We have a tremendous opportunity here, you know, to, to look at everything that's happened and pull out, the, pull out the things that worked and make them better and then work on the things that didn't work. And I'm committed to doing that. So thank you so much for being here and I'll take, I'll take some questions. Yeah, I, I apologize if I missed this. First of all, congratulations. Thank I you. apologize if I missed, um, if you said this earlier, did you extend any kind of a, um, an appeal for restraint and respect uh, to, to uh, fellow leaders and country waits for the well, in my own campaign, I issued a statement yesterday, last night, that I would not make a statement about the results until all of the votes were counted. We have to respect the process. We worked so hard. This is the first time. I wasn't sure what to expect here in Connecticut with this number, this many absentee ballots out. So I was not going to preemptively make a statement or presume anything. So I, I mean, as a leader, I try to lead by example. I can't tell other people how to lead, their, how to run their races or what to do, but I would hope that all leaders would do the same thing. How different was this race for you? <laughs> when am I just going to get a normal campaign? I mean, <laughs> I, I'm like, 2016 was just like nothing we had ever seen. We had we had no infrastructure. We really had to start from scratch. And I think the the nice thing is that we found a base of people who were so invested in that race and we were able to call on a lot of those same people and bring more people in. This time we didn't canvas at all. The pandemic really hit us hard. Um, 
I had COVID in September, so I wasn't out at all. I really had to rely on my supporters in a way that I don't even think I was comfortable with. And people just stepped up, but there was nothing we can do. And then there were so many other people who were campaigning at the same time and doing things differently. So I had to balance, well, they're out and they're doing this. What does that mean? So I really had to make some hard decisions and just say, this is the way I choose to run this campaign. And we have to try to get the message out. Um, and Mr. Sullivan was a much stronger candidate. He was a much stronger candidate. And I was, you know, that, I wasn't responsive, but I knew that I had a responsibility to make sure that my message was penetrating and that people understood the work that I had done and where I stood on the issues. And this time I had a record, uh, a voting record to, to defend, to try to amplify. In, 20, in 2018, I spoke in aspirational terms about what I would like to do. In 2020, I had to tell people, this is what I've done and this is the work I, have to, I would like to continue. And it was very important to me that uh, the margin didn't decrease. You know, we had to stay steady or expand. So it was very different this year. Well, I've always been paying attention to voters, and his. I think the numbers rounded out about the same as Manny Santos's numbers. So, I think you're giving more credit than is due. So, but um, I, I think that it was just having a consistent message and talking to voters. But I've never taken it for granted. Even last night, I mean, we've always worked hard right up till the last minute. I campaigned just as hard this year as I did in 2018. I never took it for granted. So, um, but. You know, in everything, I, I am reflective, and I, I heard some of the, I heard what people were saying, and in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, these are the areas where I have to make sure that people know where I stand, or this is where I have to solidify a foundation. But I've never taken this for granted. Related question to that: So, uh, I think everyone would agree that President Trump did sort of better than everyone expected him to do, including in some towns in, in your district. Would you care to? Can you comment on that and, and what you think is the enduring? And of President Trump and his policies and his people in your district? I think it reinforced the idea that we have a divided nation and we're going to have to do a lot of work to put things back together. I, I, I have to tell you that I, was, I am surprised by, um, you know, people literally are choosing a side. So to try to find some common ground in the middle is going to be a very difficult task. I think I'm up for that. Um, I, one of the things that is concerning is that um, just even in, I, I, and I know this isn't new to politics, but some of the things that were happening in these campaigns and, you know, I don't want it to be okay for people to practice bad behavior. You know, some of the things that we saw, I think we should all be able to agree, this is not how it should happen. Even now, declaring victory before the votes are counted. You know, trying to stop the votes from being counted. I think whether you're a Republican, whether you're a Democrat, anyone who believes in this democracy should say, we want all votes to be counted. And I don't want that to be one of those enduring things that comes out of this race, so out of this election. So, but I recognize that there are some people who either I am not appealing to or don't feel represented by me or feel like there's no way I could understand their issues. And I'm going to work really hard to make sure that even if they disagree with me, they know that I too represent them. Was there a point last night when you thought to yourself, oh, this is not gonna happen? For me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for you. Um, no, because, I, no. I mean, in 2018, we saw the, the primary, the votes came really quickly. This year, I wasn't expected. I'd already prepared myself that we won't have the numbers tonight. So they were coming in slow. But there was a point where I hadn't really thought about, I hadn't thought much about, um, I hadn't allowed myself to think about winning. It was like, you know, we're going to put a strong case out there, but I don't want to jinx it. But there was a point last night where I realized I haven't even considered losing. Like, what does that look like? Or, you know, do I need to start thinking about that? But it was a fleeting thought. It just really... Um, I think it was just when we saw that um, locations hadn't reported 
uh, in 2018, we were getting numbers in real time right from the precincts. And then the smaller towns were reporting first and many of those towns were coming in as heavy um, Republican votes. So without the balance, you know, we hadn't gotten the Farmington Valley, we haven't gotten some of the suburban areas. Um, we had, you know, some of the smaller towns in Litchfield County, but it really, there was a time where it was going, it seemed really, really close and it, it wasn't breaking away. Um, but I mean, I know how it works and my campaign manager kept saying, just so you know, this is not all the numbers. I was like, no, I'm good, I'm good. Um, but no, I, I was never, I mean, I am, you, you guys have heard me, I am so deeply grounded in my faith. I believe in the process. If the people decided that I wasn't the one to represent them, then I would have been completely supportive. I mean, you do the best you can. And sometimes it's good enough and sometimes it's not. But I really thought we've done everything. All day yesterday, I was like, is there anything else I can do? And at that point, it was up to people to vote. So um, I could always say I was a congresswoman. So, okay. yeah. So, so how does it feel winning your first election? Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> well, there are some people who are like, you have to start thinking about 2022 or tomorrow. I'm like, no, let's think of, let's just, let's just suck in what just happened, you know? I, I got this seat and then I defended this seat. I have, I have an amazing, I don't know, my campaign manager and my finance director who have been with me since the first campaign, who literally, you know, we got all this advice, you have to do this, you have to do this, and they really trusted my vision of the way I wanted this campaign to be run, the way I wanted to engage people, and it worked. Um, the fact that so many people were mobilized and energized and remained, so now I'm going to work on keeping those people engaged. You can't just vote for people and then go home and say, my work here is done. You know, it only works if you continue to participate, if people continue to stay active, if people continue to hold leaders accountable. So if I wasn't doing the job that people sent me to do, then they shouldn't vote for me again. So this really is just playing out my 15 years in the classroom. You know, really connecting all the dots that if you engage, if you're activate, activated, if you mobilize, if you participate, you can send the leaders that you want, and then you have an option, you have a choice to evaluate them and decide whether or not to send them back. So I could not be more proud uh, of what we did, what we continue to do. Um, I made a conscious choice to run a clean campaign, and I know that works, and I hope people will respond to that. Um, and literally as more people decide I want to run for office or I'm not sure how to do this that they can pull something from my campaign and use that as an example so it, it feels good <laughs> it feels good <laughs> Can I that's just it um, what's the first thing I want to work on even two years ago I had all these plans and you have to legislate in the time that you're in so obviously I would want to work on, on my committees on issues surrounding special education and food security, but we're in the middle of a pandemic. So we have to get relief out to people. We have to make sure we stabilize our economy. We have to get this virus under control and get our businesses back online, get people back to work. So even though I have all these things that I would love to do, what the people in this district need me to do right now is to deliver relief to them. So we have to get a COVID package out the door. And then, and then I'm hoping that in the long term, we will look at all of the things that COVID has exposed, the gaps in education, the gaps in food security, the gaps in housing, and say, how do we address these systemic issues in a real way? And I don't think anyone can ignore the social unrest that we've seen in our country over the last couple months. We have a mandate to do something about that, to have some honest conversations, to talk about what we need to do better but to but to say this doesn't exist and it doesn't exist here is very naive so we really have to and i've seen that in this district where people are having meetings and you know in their communities really having some difficult conversations i want to be a part of that too because we can be better than this and there's a lot of work to do and i believe that now is the time to begin to do that healing Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I appreciate you.